Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing well. I am Aisha Sayed. First of all, Ramadan Mubarak to each and every one of you watching this video. I hope and pray that we all have a beautiful and blessed month ahead. Whatever is ailing us and whatever we are praying for, I pray that it all gets answered. As Muslims, Ramadan is a month that we all look forward to. We want to welcome it, we want to be a part of it because it is full of blessings. The busyness of our schedules and life in general makes us distracted and because of that distraction, one of the things that suffers is our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We strive for Ramadan because it provides us that sense of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because obviously it is the month of the Quran and also it is a month where the entire Muslim community becomes one and does things in unison and it just gives you such beautiful vibes. One of the ways of reconnecting with Allah or building a connection with Allah is to read his words, is to read his holy book, the Quran. There are a few ways of doing that. One is recitation, reciting the holy Quran. But to be able to understand what Allah says, we have to read the translation. When we sit down and read the translations, there are several questions that come up in our minds. Those questions could be contextual questions or they could be based on something that we were unable to understand. So we look for other stuff to read. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you Quran research in English that you should read this Ramadan. The first book is Way to the Quran by Khurram Murad. Khurram Murad is well known for his insight drawn from the classical and modern knowledge. Way to the Quran shows the reader how to approach the Quran in order to develop a better understanding of it. It covers the etiquettes of reciting, reading and understanding the Quran. Obviously, everything that we do in life requires a certain amount of etiquette, requires some rules, requires some form of mannerism from us. When we go to school, we have to follow certain rules. So obviously, when we are reading the word of Allah, we have to follow certain rules. We have to follow certain etiquettes. Those etiquettes could be physical, could be spiritual, could be outer, could be inner. And Quran Murad has basically it addressed all of those etiquettes in his book. The book comprises of seven chapters and each chapter talks about the different aspects of human life and how we can incorporate the word of Allah in our lives. From the journey of life to the rules of reading the Quran and finally how to live our lives according to it. Khurram Murad has covered it all. The book tries to establish a deeper understanding of the book of Allah in our hearts so that we can be better equipped to understand it. The second book is Quran, Teachings and Applications by Muhyiddin Ghazi. The book is divided into 30 chapters and each chapter talks about the surahs of the Quran in a sequential manner. The author has explained the teachings of the surahs in a really simple way and he has put an extreme emphasis in keeping things clear and concise. Apart from talking about the teachings of the Quran and the surahs, he has also shared how we can implement those things in our lives. The third book that I'm going to be talking about is Exodium to Coherence in the Quran by Hamid al-Din al-Farahi. Hamid al-Din al-Farahi is the founder of the famous Farahi school of thought. Exodium to Coherence in the Quran is a translation of Muqaddama Nizam al-Quran and it is translated by Tariq Mahmood Hashmi. It is a really short book comprising of only 85 pages. Hamid al-Farahi challenges the widely held belief that the Holy Quran may be understood by considering each surah and each verse separately. He says that the Quran is thematically organized and each surah of the Quran is dedicated to a single major idea. Hamid al-Farahi proves that Quran is the only authority for interpreting it using this technique and the other sources that I used are subordinate to this technique. He further discusses the interpretative function of the hadith, the opinions of the sahabas and their successors, the tafsir and the narratives about the occasions of revelation to prove that they all guide towards the same thing. The fourth book on my list is The Crowning Venture by Saadi Amiya. The Crowning Venture is a beautiful book and it is an inspiration from women who have memorized the Quran and it works as a great source of motivation for beginners or for people who are on their journey to memorize the Quran. I have often heard people say that when they were memorizing the Quran, they just sort of get got overwhelmed and they stopped midway. According to Saadi Amiya, memorizing the Quran should not be an end goal, rather it should be a journey that, that should be savored. We should savor this journey of memorizing the Quran rather than putting it on ourselves as a burden. The book is filled with inspirational stories for the heart and memorization techniques for the mind. In the book, Saadi Amiya talks about her journey of memorizing the book of Allah. The book also introduces the readers to other women on their memorizing journey. So if you are on this journey of memorizing the book of Allah, 
then this book might be a great motivator for you. The fifth book that I'm going to be talking about is Means of Tafsir, Internal as well as External by Amin Hassan Islahi. The book shares a detailed understanding of Tafsir and the internal and external sources or aids of understanding the Quran. According to Amin Hassan Islahi, the internal means of understanding the Quran are already present in the Quran. They are the language of the Quran, the coherence in the Quran and the evidences of the Quran. Among the external aids of understanding the Quran are the well-known and continuous traditions of the Prophet wasallam, a hadith and the views of the Sahabas and Asl al-Nazul. The book gives us an in-depth understanding of studying the Quran and equips us with the knowledge to fully understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The final thing that I want to share with you today is an introduction to the study of the Quran by Maulana Abu Lala Maududi. This is a preface to Maulana's famous tafsir, Tafheem al-Quran. It also gives a mechanism for learning the Quran. An introduction to the study of the Quran is an introduction to the study of the Quran as the name suggests. It is done in order to make the readers have a superficial understanding of the Quran. It also answers the questions that arise in the minds of the readers while reading or studying the book of Allah. Questions like what kind of book is Quran, what is its subject, what is its true purpose and many others have been answered in this preface. It reminds the readers of the fundamental claims that the Quran makes for itself and further mentions that whether one believes in the Quran or not, one must recognize the fundamental statements made by the Quran and also by the man to whom it was revealed, the Prophet Muhammad Another important author is Javed Ahmad Ghamdi, who has written his tafsir by the name Al-Bayan. This tafsir is also getting into the minds of modern generation. You should definitely check it out. With that note, we have come to the end of this video. I once again wish you a blessed month of Ramadan ahead. Please do keep me in your prayers. Assalamu alaikum.